Let's open up this pit. My name is Adam Zuniga. I am the curator and host of the Not Fest Beer Pit Tasting Live. And today we are talking and tasting with Sam Riggins, owner, founder, head brewer at Cosmic Eye Brewing in Lincoln, Nebraska, as well as Sarah and Mario Quintero of the band Spotlights. Uh, Respectively, we here's... will say strings and synths and vocals uh, <laughs> based out of Brooklyn, but coming to us live in their new studio. Hails, cheers. Thank you all for joining us so much. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Thanks thank for having you. us. Yeah. This means so much metal to me because the NotFest Beer Pit <laughs> tastings are live and it's new and it's a chance for us to bring in subscribers so people can either drink with us at home watching the Twitch feed or actually come in and ask us some questions about beer, about bands, and we'll get into that later. But this is the first episode we've ever had jointly with a brewery and a band, with a we brewer and musicians. I love talking music with brewers. I love talking beer with bands. And the most interesting thing of all is where they cross over. And we're going to find that all out tonight. So are you ready? Yeah, we're ready. Let's do Let's it. Do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, Sam, I want to begin with you. Can yeah. you tell us how did you get into brewing and when was Cosmic Eye founded? Yeah. So um, I got into brewing. Well, I got into beer a long time ago. Um, my dad always kind of had good beers in the fridge growing up. Um, my family didn't really drink a whole lot, uh, but he, my dad was in the National Guard, uh, and he had all these guys that were in his guard unit that had lived in Germany or lived in Europe somewhere on base. And those guys would always like, it, you know, National Guard's weird too, because like you might be in a unit in a small town somewhere in like the corner of Nebraska, but you live in Omaha or Lincoln and like commute for drill weekends and stuff. Hmm. Um, so these guys would really, like come down from like Lincoln or Omaha and they'd always bring down like German import beers, English import beers, Guinness, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's really what was available in the early 90s. Sure. Um, and so we always had kind of like good beers in the fridge if we had beers. So when I was like 17 and stealing beers from the fridge, um, you know, it wasn't Beast or, you know, PBR. It was always <laughs> like, you know, Pollen or, you know, some, some, some weird shit, right? Nice. Um, so like I always really got into that early on. Um, and it was just always more interesting to me because I mean, at that point, all the advertising was just like, you know, chicks at volleyball parties and Spuds McKenzie, and, <laughs> um, you know, I think there's a lot of people watching this that are like, you know, Hey, that never really spoke yeah. to me yeah. Yeah. either, you know, like shit, who are these people? And like, I don't understand. Um, so, um, which I think ties into like the reason we're into the music we're into, you know, it just like that, I, I just didn't buy into any of it. Um, so really flash forward a couple of years, I was attending uh, school in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, we went out to dinner one night. My parents had come down quite a bit. I was in music program down there. And so I had concerts every few weeks and um, my parents had always come down for all our concerts and stuff. And people always just said, hey, you should go eat at Free State, go eat at Free State, go eat at Free State. I had never been in a brewery before. Uh, we had no idea that this was a brewery. We just thought it was a restaurant. Um, walked in and you could see just, you know, it's the old classic 90s brew pub. You can just see straight back into the brew house. Um, some of the guys were still there working. And it was just this like, holy shit moment for me where it was like, oh man, you know, this is a job and, and you can you can do this. Um, and that's kind of where the bug bit me. And I always had in the back of my head that this is what I wanted to do. Um, and it, it took a long, <laughs> it took a long time to figure out. Um, but you know, I eventually started homebrewing. Now this is probably about 15 years ago, 14, 15 years ago, I started homebrewing. Um, always still in the back of my mind that, you know, this is, would be the outcome of it. Um, and after a couple of years of brewing at home, um, I fortunately ran into the crew at Nebraska Brewing Company um, and had kind of become friends with uh, Tyson Arp, who's uh, still the head brewer there, uh, and his wife, Angela. Um, and we just hang out at, you know, this was a time when Beer Advocate was still a really big, huge thing. And, um, you know, people do like Beer Advocate meetups at like bars and do bottle shares and 
Um, you know, we'd always have a couple bottles of homebrew along with all the other stuff. Um, and then I happened to quit my last not brewing job and ran into uh, Paul Cavillac, who was the owner um, of Nebraska Brewing. And he was like, hey, man, what are you up to? And I was like, oh, you know, not much. And he was like, hey, we're getting ready to hire a assistant brewer. Um, what would you think about that? And I was like, well, shit, I just quit my job last week. <laughs> and, uh, meant to be. And, yep. <laughs> and, you know, and it's like you hear this story from brewers all the time. They're just like, oh, man, I just quit my last job and bounced into this. Um, but, yeah, basically, I was just in the right place at the right time. Um, you know, I was pretty tenacious with those guys once, um, you know, once that was floated out to me. Um, and so I just started pushing them, pushing them, pushing them and, uh, started brewing at Nebraska Brewing Company in 2010. I want to say 2004. I don't even know what year it is anymore, man. <laughs> Last year really screwed me up. Um, but I started brewing there in uh, 2010, uh, brewed there till 2015, um, and then, uh, started this and we opened October of, uh, October of 2018. So we're sneaking right up on three years. That's Happy awesome. three years, Sam. Oh, man. That is, that is most metal. Uh, I think you <laughs> express, you express something all of us can relate to is, uh, in one way, shape or form, we all have that moment of like, holy shit, this is a job, whether it's beer, whether it's music. And that really resonates. And I can tell, uh, just from the outpouring of love on social media that you are clearly a fixture of the midwest craft beer scene you are known <laughs> and loved so it's a privilege to have cosmic eye here um, you're talking to the wrong people <laughs> <laughs> you got a lot of character witnesses whether you like it or not good um and i want to hear a similar story from you from sarah and mario um can you tell us when the band began i'm really curious because i know your roots are in san diego which is of course also a great beer city uh but tell us when the band began if you can describe your sound for those who know and don't know because i love how open to interpretation it is on the interwebs yeah. and uh it's a stacked question but last but not least if you could also tell us about what your first craft beer was hmm. well all right we'll start with the sound i guess um, please uh, it's always, you know, it's a tough question to, to answer when people are like, what do you sound like? What does your band sound like? But it's like what I've taken from from other people and from reviewers and from fans. And what we think is it's really just heavy rock. You know what I mean? Like we could try and put it into a million different subgenres, but it's heavy, spacious, you know, and, and weighted rock and roll with a lot of texture to it. That's well that's said. It. That's what I would say. Um, and then the band began. And I mean, it, you know, it's obvious the sound has evolved over time. Like, I think when we first started, uh, our first demo that we put out or like EP that we put out was what, 2014? Well, we wrote our first song together in 2009. Right. Is when nice. the project was initiated right. between the two of us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we were in another band called Sleep Lady for a while. Um, and then when we moved to New York in 2013, we sort of, that's when we kind of like brought sleep, uh, spotlights, you know, alive and actually focused on it and started working on it. Yeah, we had the idea yeah. to start it for years, but yeah. we just, you know, we were busy with Sleep Lady and busy with other stuff. And then when we moved to New York, it just kind of seemed like the right time. That was the time, yeah. Um, and then there was, you know, like a year or two of just developing songs and, and trying different stuff out. We were just a two-piece at first. I was playing drums, Sarah was playing bass, and we were playing with, like, backing tracks and whatnot. Uh, and then I wanted to play guitar more, so we started looking for a drummer, and eventually, you know, we've, we've been through a few of them, but now we've landed on Chris to be our main guy, and uh, Chris Enriquez, that is, and... Uh, yeah, it's been good, man. And, you know, um, so yeah, we started, what, 20, 2014, we put out our first EP. Mm -hmm. And then our first, like, proper release was in 2016 or 15. I always forget. Basically, I'll look it up. I'll look it up for you. <laughs> <laughs> I should have this information, like, 
Uh, that was titles. Titles, yeah. titles was 2016. 2016. Uh, it was, I believe, Friday, May 13th. See, she so knows. I, I remember nice. being she Friday the 13th because I like, <laughs> I like horror movie, obviously. Yeah. But uh, it's a lucky number. Yeah, it is. It is a lucky. Yeah. Number. Um, I love it. So your roots are in San Diego, but then it really kind of formally came together and developed further in New York City. That's what yeah. Bro Brooklyn is, of course, good for that. It's a boundless source of inspiration. Yeah, yeah. it really was. Yeah. That move and, was that's, and that's where you connected further with drummer Chris Enriquez, uh, who I know from St. Vitus Bar. So shout out to Chris yeah. for sure. Yeah. And I love it that you, I, God, that you simplify the music and give it a texture, give it a weight and you create an atmosphere around it. I think that's the best description of all. Um, can you tell us, uh, can you tell us what your first, please. Oh, Bloodstock and Squatter and Fan. <laughs> uh, shout out to you and all your fans. Thank you so very much. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. the job. Cheers. Um, cheers, I'm gonna pour my beer in just a moment. I won't jinx it. Um, on that note, uh, Sarah and Mario, can you tell us what your first craft beer was? Well, I'll have to go back. My first one, well, far. I think my first craft beer, and I don't know if this counted yet or if craft beer was even really a thing. I'm sure it was. I just didn't know about it. It was probably like 1998. Uh, I had moved to Boston. I grew up in Miami, but I moved to Boston to go to school. And I bought Harpoon, a Harpoon IPA, which yeah. was. I had never heard of it. I had never, you know, even had an IPA before. I was just drinking like shit malt liquor and fucking, you know, <laughs> the usual, the usual suspects. Um, yeah. I remember drinking that and being like, whoa, this is, this, that's a lot, <laughs> you know? And then sure. Me and my roommates like got super into it. We're drinking that. Um, yeah. A lot of those like Northeastern, I guess, brew, I guess Harpoon was from around there somewhere. Yeah. Uh, do you know Sam? You know where Harpoon? I don't is? remember where they're from. I remember, I remember um, that being like one of the first beers that like I was aware of people like trading and shipping for. Yeah. You know? and, wow. Like, yeah. Because you know was... they never went with the like nationwide distro like a lot of other breweries did at that time. Right. So it was always like in that pocket in the Northeast. And mm -hmm. I remember like I don't remember who it was, but one of my friends was like, "Oh man." My buddy mailed this to me, and I was just like, uh, what? Nice. <laughs> yeah. Why? Man. And here, you know, and then, you know, I send out a lot of beer now. Yeah. The early days of beer mail. <laughs> uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's, I know they're in and around Boston. Uh, Harpoon IPA was a trailblazer in its own right, as was oh, like yeah. their, U, their UFO wheat beer, if yeah. you remember that. Yeah, if you I ever remember had that. that one. <laughs> um, Sarah, what about you? First moments or I earliest mean, memories of craft beer? I think my first standout memory is Bell's Oberon. Nice. Uh, living in Chicago, I think, you know, we were able to get it there more than most of the country for a long time. Um, and that it just really stood out to me, the flavor, <clears throat> you know, differed from the standard where I grew up. It was Miller Lite, you know. Sure. Drink Miller Lite and Ice House and, you know, whatever. <laughs> um, and I think having a Bell's Oberon, I was just like, whoa, this is beer. And I just fell in love kind of with yeah. days and it just weird. I, I just called it weird beer. I was like, this is weird. It tastes amazing. And uh, <laughs> there was a really cool bar in Chicago called the Map Room that has so much beer. And I remember going there and just trying everything to the point that I don't remember oh, what nice. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> they were really strong, but um, I really loved like, the trend was like the India IPAs, I think, at the time. Mm -hmm. um, they were really strong, but some of them were just super delicious. And um, yeah, I think that's. I love it. So yeah. shout, shout out to Bells for Oberon, yeah. for, for Two Hearted, which is still yeah. one of the best IPAs yeah. out there. A oh. lot of bit. A lot of Midwesterners, I mean, definitely have their, their roots in that moment with Bells. And I'm hearing like a lot of IPA love, or at least like, you know, IPAs were a part of what turned you on to craft beer. So it's fitting that we're about to drink one. Um, I don't want to tease, please. Wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. <laughs> this is very, very suspicious. Sam so, Riggins, do you today, want to speak to the bear pit? I, today I was trying to type beer pit in my email, and it kept <laughs> autocorrecting to bear pit, and I couldn't get it to stop. And I texted Adam, and I was like, dude, now all I can think about is some like post-apocalyptic world where people are fighting bears and pits, and like, <laughs> I haven't been able to get it out of my head all day. And here we are. All right, Sam, I'm so you started the bear this. pit. You started the bear pit. Um, I need to up my game with the chat and watch it more closely, but I'm going to give a huge shout out to the bear pit because oh, they are truly the future. <laughs> uh. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. How can you not? <laughs> Sweet. Nice. Fucking bear pit IPA coming next Sam, month. Dude. There you go. There you go. This is the kind of dumb thing I would do, you know, like, hey. <laughs> that beard is a work of art. Can you tell us how long it's been in the works? Were you ever beardless for that matter? As a child, um, for example. Or... <laughs> I've been pretty much <laughs> facial hair since, uh, since I could grow facial hair. I either had like a goatee or, um, and then I was probably, shit. I was probably in my mid twenties when I grew a beard and then it was probably wasn't until I was about 30 that I just like let it go. Um, I haven't been clean shaven in 17 years, I think was the last time I shaved. Well, there. I down to just a mustache um, and then grew my beard back and I, I just kind of trim it. And this is terminal. This is, this is as long as it gets. So. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Uh, it's moments like these that make this so much fun. So the, ol the only changes have been uh, the gray creeping in. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Well, Diet shout out to the bear pit. Shout out to Grumpy Nine or whoever it was. And here is to bears and beards and beer and whatever else starts <laughs> with a B in the in the chat and <laughs> the thread. Um, before we drink this beer, and I don't want to tease everyone too much longer, and we're going to bring in a returning champion, a subscriber from last week, Eric Masunas, to drink it with us and talk through it as well. Um, but I want to know the story behind uh, the beauty of forgetting IPA, um, because I know it's very personal to all of you. Um, so can you just tell us like how the collaboration began? What's the story behind it? What is the beer in homage to other than obviously uh, the closing track from Spotlight's album, Love and Decay? So I told you the story last time, so I'm going to let these guys tell the story this okay. time. <laughs> Let's hear them. So I guess the story of how it part, partly comes from how we actually met Sam, um, which was through a mutual friend uh, who passed away, really, his, him and his sister were, were friends with Sam, uh, Justin J, who's back here, ripping on the drums. He used to be wow. a drummer in one of my bands in San Diego back in the day, and, you know, one of our best friends, um, and one of Sam's best friends, and uh, so we had never actually met Sam. We got in touch, I think, through Courtney, Justin's sister, uh, and when we were in we were, Omaha playing the show. We were touring with the Melvins. Yeah. So and Sam came out to one of the shows mm -hmm. to check out a sound check. Uh, we hooked up. We had a beer together across the street and just hit it off. And, like, that was right before Cosmic Eye had actually come to fruition. It was wow. still just kind of an idea, right, at that point? Yeah. I was probably – I think that was probably right about the time that we, like, got our banknote, like, finalized and gotcha. were, like, yep. kicking it in high gear. Yeah. 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 And so – you know, we were like, it was that's, probably that's about awesome. six months before we started build out, I think. That sounds right, right. yeah. Because, yeah, you guys were, I think that was in, like, September or August. I mean, that was like, yep. the longest goddamn tour anybody's done for, yeah, like, the last three months. Yeah. Good yeah. lord. <laughs> I still remember seeing Melvin's post those dates, and I was like, that's a tour. Just kept going and going. Yeah. And going. <laughs> uh, for, what it's, for what it's worth, and not to interrupt at all, but I think it was, I, I immediately thought of St. Vitus when I think of my first show, uh, with spotlights, but I think it was actually with the Melvins at Irving Plaza. Oh, uh, nice. And I did not know Chris Enriquez was in the band. So it was definitely one of those, <laughs> I know that guy. Yeah. Moment. Um, that's where it began for me with you. So thank that's you for awesome. that. Um, and shout out to 
King Buzzo and the Melvins for that matter. Um, yeah. But anyways, so please continue. How did the beer kind of evolve from there? Hold on. Yeah. We got one more shout out on that tour. Shout out John Hopkins. All right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The yeah, yeah. front of house guy yeah. of all yeah. time. Yeah. Um, he died last year and was a real good friend of all of ours, too. Yeah. And um, the music scene is going to be really hard to get back into without without Seriously. John dropping through town. I'm going to start crying. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry. That's a huge, <laughs> huge hole. Okay, um, enough sappy shit. All right, so 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 yeah, so we met we met Sam, we hit it off, and uh, I think we might have maybe talked about doing a beer yeah. at that point. Um, and you know, we, we just did. kept in touch throughout time. And um, when we put out Love and Decay, I sent him. He, he had the record, and then we, you know, I don't know if you. If I told you about the song being about Justin, or you figured it no, out on your own, or he, something, I just, I just, I knew. You figured it out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I knew the second yeah. I saw the title, I knew what it was. You know, right. Yeah. So the song "The Beauty of Forgetting" was uh, about Justin J, and um, he just hit me up and was like, "This would be amazing if we could call it Beauty of Forgetting." We were already talking about the beer and like what we would want to do and all that, and it just came all it all came together to, uh, you know, to dedicate it to him. And um, and your friend uh, Diane, is it Diane? Diane as well. Yeah, my our yeah. my good friend Diane was really good friends with Justin and this whole crew. Yeah. Um, she died in a car accident. Uh, she lived down in Lawrence and was coming back and forth between Kansas City and had a we don't even know how she had a wreck. Um, they just found her dead in her car. Uh, she's twenty, um, but like you know, she was there after. Um, when she died, uh, Justin and I like were together, moving everything out of her apartment. Um, so yeah, we had to had to get her included on there too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Circle. <laughs> yeah, so it yeah, was, you know, it became a dedication to our good friends who were gone, and uh, and everything from you know the meaning behind it to the people and to to the music. And the brewery, it just came together in this mm -hmm. beer. And I remember when Sam sent us the first, uh, like the the big, big can. cans to taste, you know, of like yeah. the batch, the test batch, I guess it was. Um, we were just like, holy shit! It's like it it says everything in a beer, which I never thought was possible. You know, yeah. it could like the brightness, the darkness. It had the it's like it had the weight, but not you know, not one of those beers that like you just can't, you know, that's too heavy on your throat or anything like that. It was just perfect. Nice. And yeah. so, yeah, that's, that was the story. And we're on batch number three at this point, I think. Wow. Yeah. This so, is the third time we've put it out. So we've, we've done it kind of intermittently and then uh, people just hit us up for it all the time here. And we've just finally gotten busy enough in production the last like year that it's like, we don't really have the space to just throw things in anymore. So we just were so, so I, you know, so people wouldn't keep asking for it all the time and you could just tell them something. It's like, <laughs> yeah. we just made it kind of like our spring seasonal IPA. Yep. Um, so we'll okay. be doing this, I think every spring and all wheels fall off of it. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, so much love and so much respect for everything I'm hearing. So, I mean, uh, I'll say again, yes. Shout to, to Justin and to John and to Diane. There's a lot of love and a lot of loss in this beer. Um, there is a lot of obviously shared passion and collaboration. And I know it means a lot to all of you. And we are grateful to witness it and we're grateful to drink it. I love it that it can be expressed both as a beer, as a song. I mean, that is that is most metal. And I love to see the crossover between the two. And I'm gonna say it is, it is, uh, it is, not metal, not to cry. So if you want to get it out now or later in the <laughs> yeah, show or yeah. while we're drinking, you well, can do that. So, <laughs> so. And I, you know, and I think part of it for me too, you know, is like, you know, the ultimate tribute to like Justin is like to bring the goddamn party, you know. So, oh man, hundred um, you know, percent. So to like to be able to make something that like continues to bring people like joy and you know celebration and fellowship and all that yeah. shit um you know oh, yeah. that was for both of those guys it, i think it's a... just so important that that's yeah. like the, yeah. the legacy that we can that we can leave them yeah. yeah yeah uh all right so i'm gonna show everyone so we know what we're talking about uh Good i can I wait no longer yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm gonna pour a beer for myself and uh 
let's see, Sarah, Mario, Sam, I think you all have it. Eric, our Bye. subscriber is gonna join in. He has it, he is ready. Let's give it a proper pour. Uh, Sarah and Mario, bunch. nice. Uh, <laughs> since you gave us uh, the story behind the beer, maybe we start, Sam, if you can walk us through. Uh, let's talk about the aroma, the appearance, the flavor, the finish. And every palette is different. So Sarah yeah, and Mario, sure. I would love to know if you taste and smell and experience the same as what Sam describes. Oh, that and I'd love to bring in Eric to hear it as well. There you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good beer is worth That's waiting that for. So, shit. There you go. Cheers. I'm the effort. That's what it's all for. Cheers all around. Hail. Cheers, guys. So, um, kind of the idea that I had behind this beer, um, was to how do you like capture the sound of a band, right? How do you, how do you do that? Um, and so for me, um, spotlights is simultaneously just the heaviest shit, but then with the texture and the atmosphere, there's all this stuff that's just up here in the ether too. Um, and so how do you, how do you hold it all down with the weight and how do you get that flavor to, to soar? Um, luckily, <laughs> um, you know, there's new hops and new things coming out all the time, right? So um, luckily I had just gotten a whole bunch of samples of some hops that, that I had never used before. Um, I had put them together in a kind of a couple other pilot beers that we had did, that we had done. And I was like, hey, holy shit, this is how I can, this is how I can make this happen. Um, so part of it is like, how do you build the body of the beer? So, you know, we're using primarily Pilsner malt with this. Uh, we're keeping the BV, I think, shit, I don't even remember what this is at, six and a half. Yeah, something like that. Six four. Mm -hmm. four. So you know, four, we're yeah. try not trying to make a huge beer because we still want it to be drinkable and approachable. And yeah, so doing a double IPA didn't really make sense. You know, theoretically, like you know, the beer is going to be at a show at some point, and you know, it's pretty stupid to be running around trying to drink eight and nine percent double <laughs> IPA. So, I mean, we've all been there. Yeah. Um, yeah. But like, so like, how do you like kind of simultaneously like keep keep it heavy and, and keep it light all at the same time. Um, so we're using Pilsner malt as the base of this. Uh, and then we also add some oats into it for some kind of texture and some body and kind of that kind of helps keep the base. Then we add corn to this also. Um, I use corn in a lot of beers. We use them in IPAs. We use them in lagers. Um, I use them in Belgian and French style saisons and things like that. Um, and for me, I really like corn not just for the flavor of it, but I really like what it does to beer. Um, it dries beer out. I mean, it's super fermentable. It really helps lighten things up. Um, so really with, with the malt bill in this, you should be getting that kind of crisp graininess, classic Pilsner malt flavor. You mm -hmm. should definitely be getting some of that kind of fluffy grainy oats. And then really the corn helps that finish really dry out and kind of shoot, shoots, shoots out. We're hopping this with uh, CTZ for bittering, so just kind of classic Northwest, West Coast style hop. Uh, and then there's uh, Huel Melon, uh, Idaho 7. Oh my God. I haven't brewed this for like a month, so I, I'm losing my mind. <laughs> um, oh my God. It's Idaho 7, Huel Melon, and El Dorado. Hey, there we go. Nice. Um, so those El Dorado hops had some. Um, I always kind of describe this as a tropical fruit cocktail. So you get kind of a little bit of that mangoiness, you get a little bit of that papaya uh, right up front. And then what those Idaho seven do, and the Huel melon kind of does that for me too. Um, you get this kind of melony strawberry, uh, but then the Huel melon and the Idaho seven to me really blend well together and kind of bring it back into like that classic kind of West coast, piney woody kind of flavor um so really for me this beer starts out in that kind of tropical range in the hop notes and kind of moves into that just kind of classic west coast flavor 
Um, when we've done this beer previously, we were using a different yeast, which really pushed that tropical aspect of it. Um, this year, we kind of talked about it and wanted to get it to kind of clear up a little bit. Um, so we're using a different yeast on this. It doesn't throw as many esters. Um, and so it really kind of drinks more like a West Coast IPA than it previously did, which I'm okay. all those are mm. my, that's where, that's where my tastes lie. Um, and so, yeah, so really bright and tropical moving into that, um, kind of dank pine finish. Yeah. Well said. Um, and I want to take a moment to welcome in a, a subscriber that joined us for the, the kickoff of the beer pit tastings live. And that is Eric Masunas. Eric, uh, can you see us? Can you hear us? Cause I think we can see and hear you now and it's so meaningful to have you back in action. Yeah. I'm happy to be here. Thanks so much for, for having me back again. Awesome. Awesome. And I hope you're enjoying the beer with us. Oh, see, yeah. you're doing it. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. Um, well, you heard from Sam, and I want to hear uh, from Sarah and Mario and Eric and you as well as all of kind of everything your taste and smell and experience matches what he said. Um, we talked about this before, Sam, a little bit one on one, and I just, I love this beer. I love how dry it finishes, I love how light it is. I know that corn can be used like to kind of uh, lighten the beer and round out the grain bill in really pleasant ways when it's done in moderation. So overall, I appreciate how light and dry and refreshing the beer is. The classic bitterness is there, the pine and the citrus notes that you talk about, kind of having the roots and origin and West Coast IPA. I cut my teeth on that as well. So, so much love for what you're doing on the hoppy side. Thanks, um, man. Sarah and Mario, what do you think? What do you taste? What do you feel when you drink this beer? Does it live <laughs> up to the name? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I love how light and crisp it is, and it doesn't linger, which makes me want more, you know, after each drink, because it doesn't hang around. Um, that's what I love most about it, and it's super drinkable, and it's not too heavy, and it's not too dense. Um, I love the fruit salad up front and the pine in the back. It's it's cool. Like it, Yeah. It kind of covers everything without being overwhelming. You know, it just kind of hits you in steps. And then when you're, after about a second or two of drinking, you're like, I want another drink, you know, which yeah. makes it dangerous. <laughs> that's, a, that's a make more money trick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love it. It's really cool to hear, like, the description and everything, like hearing Sam describe everything that goes into it. Because, we, I mean, I don't really know shit about beer in that <laughs> depth you know i know yeah. i like it but i don't really go into it much deeper than that um and it totally makes sense like everything you're talking about i i taste i feel um and i think when we were talking about it too it's you know not only did you nail something that like represents the idea of the whole beer but you know we i think we mentioned we were like we don't a lot of times we don't like ipas just because they just sit here they don't really go away so i can drink one or two and then i'm done yeah. It's like drink a six pack and I'll be like, oh shit, I just drank a six pack. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Exactly. Um, so yeah, he nailed it. But yeah, I mean, I, I taste all the stuff, the fruit, the pine, it's dry, uh, it's light, but still not just like a light beer. You know, right. it's got all the flavor and all the feel. So. Yeah. Totally. Um, it, it makes sense, I guess, with our music because it's dense and heavy, but light. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I want to, God, I want to talk more about that as well. And I have to second what you said. So Sam initially sent me a six pack of this before I actually got the Not Best Beer Pit mailing. I drank the whole thing after our last conversation. And this yeah. time, this time I'm even more struck just about how dry and how crisp and how clean it finishes. And um, Eric, from your point of view, from your taste, what do you yeah, think? That, that, I have to tell you, that was the first one that I got. As soon as I got out of the box, I got it in the fridge, and that was the first one that I grabbed um, mm -hmm. and just went and sat in the back deck. And it was like the perfect beer to just sit out there, listen to music, and, and drink a beer. So it's, uh, and you, like you said, for a concert too, that's perfect. Um, I'm sad I only have two of them, but <laughs> 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 but it, it's it. it it kind of is cool. I was thinking like the way that, you know, the, the flavors go, it's like kind of takes you East coast to West coast. And then, you know, the, the, the corn kind of gets the middle of the country covered. So you got the whole, uh, uh, US uh. tour, <laughs> you got the whole U S tour covered. So, 
That's awesome. Very well said. Um, and before we talk about like the connection from the beer and the music, um, do you have any questions that you want to ask directly to Sam or to Spotlights for that matter? Um, well, as a home brewer, um, I'm president of our homebrew club in North Carolina, and um, I'm very curious about the corn, um, how it's something we could introduce at a at a homebrew level. Yeah, yeah. Into the beer. I've never tried it before, so <laughs> fascinating. So everything I use here is, is flake corn. Um, okay. So I'm not using whole corn. Um, it, doing a cereal mash uh, is a is a huge pain in the ass um, and, t- <laughs> and takes a lot of time. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I just, I just get the corn, the, the flake corn, you know, it's, it's, it's basically like roll, it comes like rolled oats or like rolled wheat, that kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, and I just use, uh, the yellow corn flakes. Um, the big thing you have to watch out for when you're using it, uh, I have a beer that, uh, we have a American light lager that's 50% corn, um, which is insane. Uh, <laughs> once you start, um, the thing you really have to watch for when you're using corn um, is you really have to use malt that has a lot of diastatic power um, to get that to get your stuff to convert. Um, so if you're only using like in that like five ten percent range, which I think this is like seven or eight maybe, um, if you're using lower quantities of corn like that. Um, you don't really need um, to worry about your your mash conversion. It'll it'll happen. Um, but as you increase that corn usage, you know, keep that bottle of iodine close by and just check just check for your conversions. Because like on the on the beer we do that's fifty percent corn, um, it's a it's a full two hour long mash at one hundred and fifty degrees to get it to convert. Oh, wow. um, sometimes it's like more like two hours and fifty. It, it's all. It, if I have a, a lot of other stuff to do that day, it's two and a half hours. If I'm not busy, <laughs> it's like an hour and a half. Um, but yeah, really, uh, if you're incorporating corn, um, you know, you really got to watch uh, that conversion. And that would be my biggest advice to, to anybody that's using it at home. Um, I use rice holes along with them, you know, just comparable yeah. to like you would with, with wheat or rye or anything like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you really just got to really just got to watch the conversion. Um, you know, it was really funny when I saw um, you know everybody freaking out about um, wayfinders like uh, the cold logger, and they were like, "Oh, we're doing it with rice to do this." And I was like, "Shit, man! I've been doing this for like three years with corn, and nobody picked me up on the national level." <laughs> so you know, basically, like what the, what they're approaching uh, that cold that cold IPA style um, is basically what I've been doing with corn um, in beers here. I mean, we've used them in double IPAs, uh, and. <clears throat> To be honest, I mean, there's beers that if we didn't tell people there was corn in it, I mean, you wouldn't know there was corn yeah. in this if I didn't no. tell you, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. there's a lot. I mean, we've I've used them in double IPAs. I've used it in, uh, it works really well um, with Saison, that kind of beer. Um, but yeah, just start start with a little, move to a yeah. lot. Um, it. It's a flavor that once you start getting into higher range, you can really overwhelm with it. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic ingredient. And, um, I think so many industrial brewers were using shitty versions of corn extracts and chemically processed things. Um, and it, it got so far away from what it, what the ingredient is, um, that it doesn't taste like it. And, um, you know, I think I would be doing this whether I was from Nebraska or not. Uh, I, I have to say, like, you know, I, and part of it, one of the things, I mean, I, when I worked for Nebraska Brewing, I mean, we traveled a lot. We were at beer, we were at beer festivals all over the country. And, you know, people would always be like, which one's got corn in it? And so, like, when I started brewing like, for this you. at home, doing test matches, I was like, fuck it, I'm putting corn in everything. You know, you're a nice smart ass. All of them. Yeah. Go ahead and find um, it now. <laughs> I've done it back a little bit. But yeah, uh, I, I think it's a fantastic ingredient. It's so underused. Um, encourage people to use it. Um, yeah, because it's it's fantastic. I yeah. love this, Sam. Cool. Thank you for standing up and representing corn yeah. and craft beer. So I, I 
for everyone watching at home, I think, I hope that they think this is equally interesting because so corn and rice, I mean, they have kind of a negative connotation in beer like they do in food. And I think that is because like suppliers and providers sure. in the past have used it to excess and they've used cheaper versions of it, modified versions of it, you know, but corn and rice, like in its purest form, are sources of fermentable sugar. That's everything we're talking about here. Uh, they don't have their own diastatic power. They don't have their own enzymes to break down starch into simple sugars, which is why you have to mix them with barley malt. And when used in moderation, they can become a harmonious marriage and really round out the flavors of one another and lighten the body, like you said, to let other characteristics like the hop shine through. I love corn and rice in beer when used correctly and how it's being used by craft brewers like yourself. So thank you for repping corn in the Midwest, my friend. I think it's yeah. fucking yeah. awesome. Um, and Eric, that is an excellent question. We talked Doing about it. corn extensively when Sam and I first got together. You're absolutely right. It's an important thing to kind of demystify what form you're using it in, how much of it to use, how to do it throughout the brewing process, because there is a right and a way, wrong way to do it. There's a correct and incorrect way to do it. And Sam, thank you for shedding some light on it. It's really neat to sure. think about it too, as like a almost like a, a champagne yeast, like you know, it, with that drying it out. It's just a yep. different way to do it, and it's. I think it's it's a better tasting way to do it. So that's awesome. I Man, really you try. know your shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. that's excellent. Okay, um, moving on from corn. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so I want to. You all both, uh, uh, Sarah and Mario and Sam. You all spoke to this already in your own way. But I do want to talk about how like a standard or regular strength American IPA can represent a band like Spotlights, which is of course a big, vast, sweeping operation. And I love it that you've already mentioned like, okay, to, for a beer to represent a, a band, a post-metal band, an atmospheric metal band, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so it's going to have to be like this double triple IPA or for any metal band, it's going to have to be this Both big metal. boozy imperial stout. <laughs> I know, I know there's so many issues with that term, but tell us how you feel uh, like a regular IPA, like a standard strength IPA can represent Spotlight's music and how it does in this instance. Hmm. <laughs> Who wants to start? So you guys know, I'm getting a lot of, I'm getting a lot of lag right now. Yeah. Oh. I mean, I Sorry. feel like, I feel like this beer. I'm is starting kind to lag here, it's, guys. It's kind of, you good there? Give us just a moment. Oh man! Yeah. I you think you froze up, so Sam. Weird. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> the corn. Okay. Get you. Just yeah. It's too much corn. <laughs> okay. Um. I'll get out. What I was gonna back. say is, is to us. Like, okay, I'll be back in a second. All right, see you in a bit, Sam. <laughs> we, uh, you know, a lot of times, like, let's say people who don't know us or whatever, we might show up to a show and, and maybe because they see us, like, we might not look like your typical heavy doom band or whatever, whatever that might look like. Um, you know, a lot of times people have like a misconception about what the music might sound like when we walk in, but then we play and they're like, oh shit, I did not expect that. I get and it. I feel like that's kind of like where this beer can make sense for a band like us because, you know, first of all, it's like a stripy pink label. You don't know what you're really getting. Maybe it's like a little fruity, whatever drink, but it has so much substance to it when you actually give it a chance that it, right. you know, I, it's a good way to tie into a band like us where it's not just like, you know, a hairy double IPA for like a big burly metal dude. Yeah, has. there's a lot there's a lot of nuance to it. And, uh, you know, I don't know. I think so. I think that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> that makes yeah. that makes total sense. Sarah, would you say the same? Yeah, I think so. I, I like that. it You know, it matches our misleading look. You know, it, it you know, people, especially when they see me uh, being a little blonde girl and I have a you know, a 14 pedal pedal board and, you know, like <laughs> a giant amp and what, what actually ends up coming out. Oh it's yeah. The same way with the beer. It's like, Oh, just another IPA. It's just this or that. But then when you taste it, it's, it's super He's dense back. and refreshing. I'm back. He's back. We talked a lot. Yeah. 
We were just talking shit about you. It, it, it was. I'd be talking it, shit about all you guys, too. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know what's up. Oh, on and off the camera. Yeah, oh, God. Love the name. Hell yeah. Jordan Shibley, what a rating. I hope it was a good one. Thank you very much. <laughs> um, Sam, it wasn't all shit talking. There was a lot of praise as well. Um, oh, good. <laughs> I think we got, I, I think, and you're probably going to agree with this, but we got to kind of the core of like, okay, so how can a beer, uh, how can a standard strength, regular strength, American IPA represent spotlights, which is a big band, you know, a big textured, right. atmospheric, doomy, sludgy band, all those things we know and love. Um, and they're right. They, I mean, walking into a venue, they're like, well, we might not look like you might expect us to look. Uh, and then we get up and play and fucking blow your minds. And you can say the same for a beer with like a striped pink label, you know? Yeah, right. And then exactly. you crack it open. And before you know it, you drink the whole six pack. I mean, I've dealt with the same <laughs> shit. People tell me I can't host a show on beer and metal because I don't have enough tattoos or just don't look like the standard <laughs> like metal dude, so you know? Like so yeah, yeah. I, I totally get that. And I'm not going to keep Where's plugging myself. Where's the battle vest, but... Adam? Where's the battle vest? <laughs> <laughs> At least I am flying. I am flying the flag. Yeah, You're, this is one of my favorite you. shirts, That's by right. the way, Sam. This I is totally like a DIY homespun shirt. <laughs> I know. It's a I favorite. Miss, I but missed the boat the on funniest. the Doom shirt. I should have worn my wolf shirt. I'll go change. Yes. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll add this, that like we made a beer for St. Vitus Bar that was a black pilsner at 4.6% because it, it was a beer that was meant for drinking, a beer that you could have more than one of during a show. Even though it was dark in color, it was not over the top in terms of flavor or alcohol, right? So I always love it when a beer doesn't have to be big and boozy to meet the idea right. of what the band, the venue, or whatever else people have in their heads think it should represent. So there's a... There are a lot of layers and a lot of textures to inspire uh, these beers for bands, for venues, whatever the case may be. Uh, Sam, was that part of the logic? What do you think? How does uh, I mean, the beauty forgetting represent? Listen, you get 10 beers deep and they're all heavy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, for me, I mean, it's for me, it's all it's just all attitude for me. You know, like it doesn't have to be over the top to be heavy you know like right. i think about i don't know who it was i think it was like i think it was matt pinfield on and he was still doing like 120 minutes and i don't remember what record he was talking about but he was like you know you don't have to have the volume up to 11 and like a wall of fucking amps and all this shit like it's just got to have substance and balls yeah, and like, and he was doing it in his like, you know, yeah. and it was like one of the greatest things I ever heard. You know, awesome. it's like, you know, um, you know, Cat Stevens isn't heavy, but it's heavy as fuck. You know, and, yeah, and you know, like if, if yep. you're really listening to it and and picking up what they're putting down, like that kind of stuff is is heavy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and for me, I think like, you know, what you put into it and your attitude towards it and how you carry it. I mean, cause at the end of the day, I don't really give a shit what somebody else thinks about it. You know, like sure. some person that's just casually having a beer. I mean, I want them to like the beer. Right. But like, sure. if they're not getting down with the whole vibe of what we do, I get it because there's tons of things that like, I just casually take in too. Yeah. But yeah. I think when the intent is this is heavy it's heavy Agreed. I don't, yeah. maybe Agreed. i don't know yeah yeah, yeah. Right. hell yeah uh no mario you began this talk you know uh, saying that at its core spotlights is a hard rock band a rock band and of course like all of metal's elements are in rock and all of sure. rock is in the blues man and these are all like heavy for the time and place they represent exactly. so exactly. i'm a I'm a believer. I'm on board with this beer. I love the pink label. I don't know if that was intentional, Sam, or just like, how, how did the label art come together? So that was originally, I mean, that's a color we pulled off the album cover. Right. Um, and, and we originally, um, when we first did this, um, it was like basically shit. I think it was silver. 
like for our core beers, we just do it's kind silver. of like a, a gray back, gray yeah, kind of silver gray. background. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we kind of differentiate the beers by like the colors we use on them. And they're, they're very bare bones. Um, you know, I've always said I want like our branding to just be pretty minimal because I want beers to be for themselves. You know, I'm doing cartoon characters and I mean, whatever. <laughs> if it works for your brewery, it's fant- fantastic if it works for you. It's not me. It's not what I'm about, right? Sure. I don't like really busy things visually a lot of times. Like for me, I really like things that are pared down, minimal. Um, and so we just had kind of the pink on the label. Um, and then when we changed it, I, I talked to our designer and I was like, hey, look, like, let's make this just a little bit more dynamic. Uh, and so we came back with this kind of candy stripe, kind of barber pole stripe thing. Um, and we've used this layout on, so everybody can see it. No. Um, yeah. We've kind of used this motif now on a couple other uh-huh. things too. Cause like, I think if you look at it from a distance, it kind of keeps that real simple vibe going to it. Um, but yeah, it's just pink off the, off the album cover. It's cool. Very cool. Um, for all of you, I, you know, and it's, and it's everything we've been talking about in one way or another, but what, what is the connection for you personally between between craft beer and heavy music? Like, are they two different expressions of the same impulse, the same ethic, the same attitude? Is it something more than that? Is it something different from that? What do you think? I don't, I mean, I don't really know. I've the, What I've noticed, you know, not so much personally, but like just in the scene and like, it, it, it just seems like two scenes that have kind of merged together naturally for some reason, you know what I mean? I don't know if it's because of the people who were into brewing that were into a similar kind of music that were crossing over and like, or it's just, it, I don't know, something that happened naturally, but like for, I mean, for years and years, people who I've known that are into music, particularly like heavy music are into beer. Yep. You know, and I don't know if, if and, and vice versa as well. So, like, I don't know where that came from, but it's just something that seems to go together naturally. So, and and personally for me, I mean, I, don't know, I like to drink and I like playing music. <laughs> <laughs> that is a match made in heaven and hell. That makes perfect sense to me. Um, for you, Sarah, what would you say? Um, I don't know. I, I think. I saw the connection starting, you know, a while ago. I lived in Oregon for a while and, you know, that that was like before craft beer really exploded. I was there in like 1999 and I knew so many people that made homebrew and were making their own beer and there were there were like breweries there and it was really cool and all of them really loved a lot of heavy music that I loved. So I feel yeah. like that connection we slowly just started finding each other and supporting each other, um, which is awesome. You know, brewing beer is an art form, making music is an art form, sure. painting, you know, whatever you're doing creatively is art and it's hard. Um, and I think the more we embrace each other, whatever aspect it is, the better. So I think it's really cool to see these two worlds start colliding, you know, whether you blame it on the metal, the metal dudes or the craft beer industry, it's like <laughs> that connection's always been there, you yeah. know, yeah. Like, we love fucking getting together and partying and letting loose and headbanging and having a good beer, you know, or having a shitty beer, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's all right. Do um, it. But I think it's cool to see those worlds collide and, you know, just supporting each other. We, we got to do it more, you know? Yeah. I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, yeah. Sam, Sam, you obviously have a, a lot of passion about this and started a started Nebraska's yeah. heaviest and rudest most brewery heaviest. for that. Yeah. Most heaviest brewery for yeah. that reason. Yeah. Um, yeah. What, what do you heaviest. think for I mean, you like, personally? I mean, for me, like, it's just, even though beer is huge now and craft beer is huge, like, this all started and it's all, it's all underground culture. Um, and I yeah. think that's really where it starts. Yep. Um, yeah. you know, everybody that I know that's doing beer started in their garage. Every band mm-hmm. that I know started in their basement or their garage. Yeah. 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 You know, and I don't, I, we always joke in the beer industry that like, 
um, all of us should have been way more into computers because those guys at Apple um, are doing okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, like, uh. Did the wrong shit. Um, but, you know, I think, I think, I think it all just starts as it's underground, you know, and like, yeah. we're not, none of us started doing this to win popularity contests. None of us started doing this to be cool. Um, I mean, being in a band is some real nerdy shit. Homebrewing <laughs> is some real nerdy shit. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, and, yeah. the, and people that just kind of like go to a show here and there, people that, you know, buy two CDs every five years. Oh, do people do people buy CDs still? They oh, do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So good. anyway, um, people that, you know, people that buy 99 cent songs on iTunes and have the uh, Spotify free version or whatever, like those people don't get like how fucking nerdy it is to do this stuff. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where it all starts is you, you start doing it. Because, you know, like, you, you, you don't pick up a guitar and, you know, uh, go sell out Madison Square, a four-night stint at Madison Square Garden, you know. <laughs> you're doing it You're doing it for yourself, and you're yeah. doing it to hang out with your friends. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's how everybody starts in craft beer. And then, um, oh, man, I want to open this so bad. I just got a really cool art proof that I want to see, but I'm going to open it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> It's for our Oktoberfest mugs that my buddy Nate does Damn. for us. Nice. Um, so, but I mean, really, it starts <laughs> It starts life as like, you know, pleasing yourself, getting into it. And I think it also is like a thing where it's like, you want to know and understand more about it. Um, and then the next logical step is, I mean, if there's no beer at a show, are you going to a show? Like, let's be real. Let's be real honest about that. Right. <laughs> and so, like, that's the next that's the next step for me is if you're at a show, you're drinking beers. And who are you drinking beers with? You're drinking beers with your friends. If you're going to the right shows, you're drinking beers with the bands. And like and then, you know, you just have this like sense of community from that. Yeah. And then I think the other thing is that there's this thing where I mean, being in the brewery is a lot like being in a kitchen. You know, we're all like these dirty scumbags and, you know, like we're listening to rock, like we're listening to hard rock, yeah. and listening to metal. And whether you like it or not, the dude that cooked your cheeseburger and the dude that brewed your beer or whatever um, is, you know, probably listening to some music that, you know, your parents aren't into and your grandma's not into. <laughs> and, and, it all just bleed, it, and it all just bleeds from there. Yeah. But I think it all really just does start from underground culture um, and doing it for yourself. For you sure. I, and there, I, and I, there's the DIY aspect of it, too. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. Know, nobody, there shows is. You, nobody shows you how to open a brewery. Um, no. <laughs> you got to either be lucky enough to work at one or, you know, oh, my God, I froze again. You look good over uh, here. No, you we still good. have you. We still have you. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're fine here. Yeah, um, Sam, I mean, come on. Oh, now you're frozen. Oh, no. I'm supposed to have really <laughs> jump out and jump back on again. Please do. Um, I, I, there's, a, there's so much to unpack there. I can't begin to tell you how much everything you all just said resonates with me. Back. So, back. welcome back. <laughs> welcome back. I love. <laughs> oh, we got it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I I'm love the fiber, comparison. I'm on fiber internet too. Oh man, you need to get yeah. your money back. Me too. That's how they get you in the first place, I think. Yeah. Um, but but oh look. My God. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> he just actually froze. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if I trust him at this point. That could be real or it could be yeah, play. Know, uh, right? Okay. <laughs> okay. Really Sam will be back. Nice. Cool. Here is to inviting beer. I think yeah. I, I want to, out of everything you all just said, so first of all, this idea of like uh, head brewers and head bangers all starting into the garage, starting in the garage. I mean, that makes total sense to me. And I guess you probably could say some of the same about like the computer guys. And hey, I guess they just went on a different path from the garage. Um, 
But overall, talking about this as like an underground DIY scene, like even though it seems like there is so much craft beer on the market now, and there's so many bands out there, once you like look for it and dig into it, it's still a very, very small percentage of like mainstream culture in America or worldwide. I mean, the reality is craft beer is still something like 10% of the overall market share, give or take, you know? And you have been living in the underground music scene. And even though like in its, at its peak, St. Vitus can have a different show every night, but this is hey. like, there we go, come back. Oh, He's back. Yeah. <laughs> You're moving. We're gonna have a talk with Allo tomorrow. Uh, <laughs> Sam, welcome back. Uh, I'll be brief. I was just saying how much again. I love- Welcome back again. Welcome back again. <laughs> um, I love the comparison of like uh, head brewers and head bangers starting in the garage. And I love it that these are DIY underground scenes that still remain very small and underground in the greater scheme of things. Hey, who's that? That's Olive. Olive. What's Hello, up? Olive. What's up? That's Mario and Sarah. Oh, yeah. They have a dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Get out I like your dog. <laughs> Where? <laughs> That's metal. Um, That's metal. That is most metal. Uh, let's move on to a few more joint questions. Yeah. Um, what albums are playing in the brewery recently uh, at Cosmic Eye? And uh, for spotlights, what are you all drinking at home other than your namesake beer? <laughs> right, um, that better be it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're not, I'm not really, Cosmic Eye. really not saying this to like just uh, smoke, blow smoke up Sam's ass, but we mainly, like, if we're not drinking shitty beer, we're drinking Cosmic Eye beer, cause and not yeah. not our beer in particular, but like all kinds of stuff. He sends us delicious. He beer. sends us stuff. We yeah. try and support and buy stuff as well. And like every once in a while, we'll go out and get like uh, you know, like an oatmeal stout or something and yeah. enjoy it. But we're not huge beer drinkers on a regular daily basis, other than like shitty light beer just to kind of pass pass the thirst, I guess. Well, or, well I mean, for me, I I actually have a lot of food allergies and i actually have a lot of allergies to, to craft beer mm-hmm. which sucks i i developed in my like super early 20s when i was getting really into craft beer because that's when it, like around the time it was like taking off um so on the regular we drink coors light and corona premiere <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, because they don't aggravate the issues i have as much but you know when i when i'm feeling crazy it, it's pretty much cosmic eye beer Oh, or, well there. Or, you know, I still love Bells. It's still one of my favorite. Um, they have like a vegan stout I think they made recently, which I drank and it, it didn't bother me as much. But um, Okay, yeah, interesting. I, I, have, I have to do craft beer in moderation. So when I do, it's pretty much Cosmic Eye. Is it, um, is it a gluten thing or is it like, a, I know a lot of people kind of find their beer with fish bladders and things like that. Is it... Is it a gluten thing? Is it a vegan thing? Is there a specific allergy just out of curiosity or? Yeah. So, well, I, uh, I have an autoimmune disease. So a lot of foods, especially as I get older, I'm discovering cause a lot of inflammation Mm -hmm. and, uh, like barley, you know, malted barley is like a huge issue for me. Um, and the gluten thing, it's not, it's not like huge on the allergy radar, but if I do it too much, it can be, um, just, you know, doing it in moderation, uh, helps you know it's it's really just just those few ingredients but you know sure. pretty pretty severely like you know a 6.4 beer feels like an eight beer when i drink it i've had <laughs> one i feel like i've had four yeah <laughs> i get it it's well that's it, it's again wild. yeah that's why it's so meaningful to have you drinking with us here and now and i guess that's also <laughs> another shout to corn the yes. secret ingredient yes. the secret and the greatness beyond you know, cosmic eye, you know, yeah, because that, that helps the, cut the some of the barley batch, out. The first batch of beauty for getting, we tried to make gluten free. Yeah. Um, it was pretty close and it tasted really good. It like, was so close. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Most and Sam. Is gross, so. uh, it's a work in progress. Uh, it's, it's, I know, I see a lot out there that are gluten reduced, but gluten free <laughs> is obviously better. challenging. It's been, yeah. It's getting better for sure. Well, Sam, that means you have your work cut out for you, and tell us, <laughs> tell us, um, tell us what's playing overhead in the in the in the brewery. You also spoke to just 
hard rock and heavy metal kind of fueling people through their day, whether they're working in the kitchen or in the brew house. So what have you been listening to recently? Has the new Gojira album grown on you at all? I stopped, dude. I put it away. <laughs> um, but here's the deal. I, like I said last time we talked, I know I'm going to pick that up in like six or eight months and be like, holy shit. Yeah. It's coming, how, man. How it's didn't coming. I love this? So yeah. Uh, We'll give it, I'll probably start listening around Christmas time again, or somebody will be like, hey man, check, check that out, and I'll be like, fuck, okay, and I'll put it back <laughs> on, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll love it, you know, but uh, lately in the brewery, we've been, I've been listening to the, uh, the new Yatwa a lot, um, nice. these guys blew my mind, I saw them almost 10 years ago, uh, they were opening for Inner Arma, and um, I had no idea who they were and they were just like kids and walked in the show. I was talking to Mario about this last night and this guy had the jankiest rig I ever saw in my life. <laughs> it's full on pawn shop, everything. Oh, and, yeah. you know, and I was like, this is either going to sound like shit or be rad. And like the <laughs> second they started playing, I was just like, Oh my God. So, uh, their new record just came out on relapse. I don't know what four, maybe three or four weeks ago. I've been powering through that a lot. Uh, the new King Buffalo record. Um, I, I mean, King Buffalo is one of the best bands in the country right now. And, um, you know, it's just pretty spacey psych rock, but they're so dialed into their own sound. Um, I caught them open for the sword. It was right before the brewery opened. Nice. And they just blew me away. <clears throat> and I was just like, man, I was like, I don't know how this band wasn't on my radar. And I've been awesome. a huge fan of theirs ever since. That new record, Dead Star, that came out last year was maybe one of my two or three favorites. Uh, the They're putting out three records this year. Oh. Um, so yeah. the first one just came out a couple weeks ago. It's amazing. Uh, I've been listening to that new Somnuri record like crazily. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Mario and I talked about this last night too. And I was like, man, like they're just so... They've just got such a unique sound, but it sounds like everything that you love all at the same time. I mean, yep. it's just sludgy and mean and fast and slow, and there's awesome melodic parts, and then they'll just rip your head off with something else. Um, and th that's what I've been really listening to the last like month or so is those three records. I mean, they're all they're so good that I'm like fighting with them and like, <laughs> you, you want know, to play I'm them all like, at once uh. I'm like shit what do i do and, um and like you know you just end up hitting something and, it, and it's amazing so nice, nice. Uh, i've been listening to a lot of low rider lately um nice back there too um we always have a lot of chemists going in the brewery too uh, nice. i've been listening to that last judas priest record on and off again too that oh, yeah. was that shit was a banger, dude. Like, I don't know no how you're, I don't know how you're sixty in your sixties and put out the best record of your career. Seriously, <laughs> I mean, crazy. It's, it's, anybody that slept on that because they're a bunch of old dudes, like you get on it because <laughs> like none of us are getting any younger, right? No way. Yeah, so, forever young, man. That's what, I've been, that's what I've been listening to. That's awesome. What a lineup. That that brings us to to present day, and uh, I want to ask you about the future a little bit as well because. Obviously, like breweries and tap rooms are reopening, uh, venues are reopening, concert halls. So, uh, Sarah and Mario, can you tell us kind of what's in your not too distant future? Are you going to be touring again? Are you going to be recording again? And uh, same for you, Sam. Are you throwing the brewery doors open? And maybe you can tell us what beers are coming up as well. So, um, first of all, spotlights. What does kind of the new normal mean for you going forward? Um, well, we're slowly starting to put plans together. We have some things in the works for, uh, for winter time. Yeah. So, you know, nothing super expansive, but some short runs, uh, you know, just kind just of peeking in little by yeah. little before, before we can kind of blow it out and do the whole country again. But yeah, we'll be out there in December and January. Stuff should be getting announced within the next couple months. Awesome. And, uh, yeah, we're super excited. It's kind of weird to just finally be able to like talk to the agent and start booking things and, you know, putting plans together and looking at yeah. everything again. So it's like, we forgot that we actually, this happens. Yeah. Right. I mean, sorry, go ahead. 
No, just I saw some photos of you all back in a rehearsal space practicing together again, and everyone was kind of like, "So what do we do? You know, like yeah, yeah. how do we do this again?" Um, exactly. And it's I, I mean, yeah. and just speaking for fans and everyone at home, I mean, it's a great thing to see you again and know that it's coming back. But um, awesome. but yeah, what what else are you looking at coming up? And I mean, yeah, then musically, we're you know, like you said, this is a new space that we finally finished building out, so we're uh, we're ready to start. Uh, making new music and I think that's going to be happening soon hopefully within the next month or two as well yeah. um, you know it's always kind of a long process for us but hopefully by next year we have a little something to, to put out there something new yeah awesome yeah. yeah that's a lot to look forward to oh, we love Lexington we'll be back oh we'll definitely be back in Lexington it's it's one of our favorite places to play. Yeah. For sure. Well, that yeah. sounds like a promise to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Sam Riggins, uh, what beers are coming up? And uh, is the brewery now at full capacity? If the taproom door has been flung open, are you raging again? Yeah. So, um, taproom is fully open again. Um, fortunately, in Lincoln, we were on pretty strict mask mandates and, and capacity things for businesses um and they allowed us to go back to 100 percent uh two or three weeks ago um and on friday night man i was drinking <laughs> I, switched I switched from beer to club soda and like oh, now i'm yeah. burpee Guys, don't, <laughs> don't stop drinking kids um, don't hydrate that's the message <laughs> I had to have it's an Alka-Seltzer before method. we started this thing, so. I didn't. <laughs> um, but, yeah, we're uh, completely going off our directed health measures on Friday night. Um, so we're, we're back. Um, you know, we're starting to see each week's kind of picking up a little bit. It's still weird, and it's still kind of spotty. Huh? Did you guys see what I did there? Spotty. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> terrible. These jokes suck. Um, yeah, I mean, we're, we've really seen like consistent weekends the last few weeks and like the day, each day is, it's really weird. Like we'll have a day where we're just dead. And then like today we were, we just had a banger out of just nice. nowhere. So it's, it's weird. Everything's weird. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we're, uh, we're getting ready to put a PA in here in the brewery and start doing shows at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Most year. metal. Um, we're going to get a light rig and monitors and all that shit. Nice. This was something I was going to buy right before the pandemic hit. And <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't because it's, yeah. <laughs> it's all free. Um, but yeah, we're ready to, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we just released all our new uh, summer seasonal beers last week. Nice. We're getting ready to release this bad boy uh, in about a week and a half. Oh, uh, boy. So we're uh, doing uh, Vox and Hops, uh, Brutal North America. Um, so this is 23 breweries, 23 bands. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. sorry, 22 breweries, 22 bands, one brewery and a podcast. Um, so huh. I got teamed up with my good dude, Eddie Torres, who yeah. everybody yeah. knows. What's up, Eddie? Um, Shout out to Eddie. So Eddie and I are teamed up for this. Um I I really don't listen to very many podcasts, and um, it's funny because the, the only two I listen to regularly are Rock and Roll Beer Guy and Vox and Hops. Um, so we're calling beer. I don't really listen to podcasts. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, it's basically like a dry. Um, it's we're calling it a modern American lager. Um, it's a dry lager with rice. Um, we're, here we are back to those adjuncts. Um, so this is a four, this is a four percent. It. It's four percent lager. Um, we hopped it with some mosaic and some bar bruge. Um, so it has these really nice, bright tropical notes, and then a little bit of that kind of like berry cherry in the background. Nice. Um, this is a really cool project that Matt put together. Um, I'm really stoked to do it. And then the other thing we're getting geared up for in September uh, is uh, Decibel Beer and Metal Fest. Um, we're going to do another collaboration beer with the homies from Municipal Waste. Nice. Um, we did a beer with them last time they came through on their uh, Napalm Death uh, co-headlining tour. 
Uh, we call it your cut off. It was a black logger. That's right. <laughs> we play we play their song your cut off every night. Um, when we uh, do last call, uh, we have awesome. a last. Uh. And it's uh, white snakes full of the night, and then uh, it goes into your cut off, and then it goes just straight into bong ripper. And um, Those are my homies, each, so yeah. each one nice. gets pro- we get progressively louder on each one, so yep. people get the point. Yeah. <laughs> Closing and time. We did, um, we did your cut off, and it was a black logger uh, for beer and metal. Uh, we're doing. Apparently, this is now a beer brand for us, uh, so we're doing a new version of your cutoff. Uh, we're basically looking at doing um, the original beer, but pulling all the black malts out of it. Um, I'm sending the pilot batch off to Witty tomorrow. Um, I am uh, pushing for co- having it called your cutoff unplugged for <laughs> remix or something like that. Yeah. Um, Hopefully, we're also going to be uh, doing a show before this with the Spotlights guys, with Sumner yeah. and Mr. Enriquez's other project, Total Meltdown. Yeah. Well, look at that. still kind of on hold. We've got to figure out some beer stuff and some other stuff. Um, but hopefully, we're doing that before Decibel Beer and Metal because it'll be sick. Yes. Uh, so, this is also exciting. Yeah, it'll be really yeah. cool if we can pull it off. But, you know, life is hard. Um, and things come up and weird things happen and yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know how we're getting beer out there yet. So <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> we'll drive um, it. there I, um, I'll, there's been so much love throughout this live stream. Um, I'll second what you said and give another shout out to Matt McGacky from Box and Hops and vocalist from Katopsy, as well as, uh, Eddie Torres, the rock and roll beer guy. I had the privilege of, uh, introducing your beer i don't really listen to podcasts yeah. for the <laughs> box and hops brutal north american it. tour so uh privileged to be involved in it in any way shape or form and um before we begin to close out uh with any kind of words or message to not fest beer pit subscribers at home i hope everyone's enjoyed this as much as i have i want to bring eric back in and just tell us what else you're drinking what else you're listening to? Do you have any shows coming up? Do you have any beers you're looking forward to? I know you're a fan of Adroit Theory, man. So just yes. tell me, like, tell us what you're doing and what else you'd like to see in the beer pit. <laughs> uh, well, you know, I, I grew up in Rhode Island, so up in the New England area. So I was lucky enough to grab some Treehouse recently. Uh, my parents came to visit, so they brought some. And then just when I ran out, one of my friends went up to visit his family in Cape Cod, and they happened to open up one there. So, um, so I, I was gifted <laughs> nice. a couple of four packs from that. So I'm Excellent. very happy to, to, to grab that. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of fun. You know, North Carolina's got a lot of uh, really great craft breweries, especially I'm in the Raleigh area, but we have Asheville and Charlotte um, and you know, Virginia's not far away either. So, you know, there's lots of stuff <laughs> always happening. Um, so it's, it's been kind of fun um, to do that, to, you know, kind of see what uh, w- what comes down. <laughs> uh, you know, Vail is up in uh, Virginia, so they're not too far. So people make the trip up there and, and, and bring back a haul or um, head down to Charlotte. Um, but actually what we did with, um, with the brew club um, since we couldn't meet in person, I brought in, um, I reached out to a lot of the breweries that we couldn't get to <laughs> um, on a regular basis. So uh, some of the ones uh, in North Carolina, but then also in Tennessee and Virginia. Uh, so we get to meet some really cool people and kind of, uh, you know, let everybody kind of intertwine again, which is kind of great. So uh, most metal. I wish I could get more of the beers from everybody, but, <laughs> you know, um, I'd say so when things open up, then we can start traveling again and um, I'll, I'll have to do some road trips. <laughs> Beer travel is some of the best travel. Um, <laughs> yep, absolutely. I, I have made the trip to, to Asheville, so I know what a great beer scene it is. And um, I think at some point, at some point, we'll have burial in the beer pit for sure. Um so if there's anyone else that should be on our radar, any other recommendations you have, as always, let me know. And it's just thank you so much for not only subscribing yeah, to the Beer Pit, but for giving us your time and taking a moment to join in all this. It's really meaningful yeah. to have you here. So thank you. Thanks for hanging out. 
yeah, yeah. Man, Thanks, I, man. absolutely I totally appreciate it it's, it's so much you know it's so great to meet everybody in the music and beer uh community yeah. you know it's uh especially after this year it's it's been yeah. it's, yeah. it's even it's even better now you know to, to be like you know i can't wait to get back out there again and go to shows and travel to breweries and do all these things so yeah likewise so on, the, on the road again <laughs> well, we are we are in it together and uh Mario, Sarah, Sam, um, anything else you'd like to say to Not Fest Beer Pit fans and subscribers out there? Anything else you want to share with people drinking at home? I don't know. Uh -huh. Say something. Say have, something. Uh, nice have fun. <laughs> have fun, man. We fucking bust our asses this year and a half to fucking stay safe and make it through alive. And we did, some of us, and we should fucking, you know, Keep it all in mind. Learn some fucking lessons. Don't forget about it. Stop but, picking your nose. Yeah, stop picking your nose. <laughs> Wash your fucking hands. Cover your mouth when you cough. Yeah. You Wash know, your hands. But, mm. like, Wash your hands. Let's fucking have some fun. Yeah. And, you know. Let's support each other it. and, and uh, maybe let go of chips and grudges and just yep. respect each other and uh, support art and be there for each other and you know, be there for the little guy and the big guy and the guy yeah, in the middle and, and the gals too. Yeah. So. Go, go, yeah. go spend money. Yeah. Go spend money. <laughs> go spend yeah. money. Yeah. Because, you know, you know, there's this idea that you see in the news and you see floated around with people that like, oh, everything's okay now. It's not. It's not. No. Every yeah. little restaurant that you go to is still struggling. Yeah. Every bar that you go to barely got through last year. Yeah. Every band that you love, aside from maybe like Metallica, like <laughs> is having a real shit year. Yeah. Buy records, buy TV, yes. tip your fucking staff, order yeah. extra food, take your parents out to eat, go out and spend money because yeah. people, we're not done. We're not done with this. And like yeah. people are still recovering. Yeah. Yep. Go, go support the shit that you love as hard yeah. as you can right now. Yeah. And it'll come back to you. You know, it's like yeah. it's a fucking cycle, man. If yep. you put it out there, it'll come back. So we just yep. gotta yeah. keep it moving. Get it. Agreed. Spend money. Yep. Yeah. That's, <laughs> there, that's it. You hey, you can't take it with you. you yeah. Know, right. So. Yeah. There are far worse ways to spend your money than on beer and music. So yeah. I'm all for supporting yeah. what you love and the people you love. Yeah. I I have to say I I think it's going to be really rare that we get both a brewery and a band on that are this close and this comfortable. And I think it's been a really interesting conversation. Awesome. It's been that much more meaningful to have you here together. So. Thank you for supporting probably, us yeah. and the beer pit for giving you us your beer. Yeah. You probably and for shouldn't have done this a one first. Ah. Save this one for later. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's a strong well, it's all start. Downhill from here. Bar is high. Um, I am going to take a moment. I've got to give a shout to the voice of God. We might have to rename it the voice of Devil or Satan or something more fitting for the beer pit. But to our to our producer Chris, who's working tirelessly behind yeah. the scenes, yeah. thank you so Thanks, much. Chris. Um, <laughs> there, shout to our uh, our graphic designer who gives the beer pit its form and function on social. That is Audrey. And a shout out to our retail partner, uh, Agnes at Roselle Park. All this beer, I work with the breweries to get Man. the beer in New Jersey, which ships from there to another 30 states. Uh, all these people work tirelessly to bring this project to life. It is, uh, <laughs> again, I think you all can speak to this uh, from the brewery's point of view, from a band's point of view. People don't really see what goes on behind the scenes to get to the final product. It's a lot of work, but it's the most satisfying work yeah. we could possibly be doing. So thanks to everyone who makes it possible yeah. and everyone who supports yeah. it out there. Agreed. Amen. Praise Agreed. Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Praise Satan. Praise Satan, hail Satan, and on that note, on that note, uh, voice of Satan. I don't know if you like that, Chris. Your call. Anything else before we go? Okay, I'm gonna let you lead us out. Thank you all again so very much, and until next time, we will see you in the pit. See you in the fucking pit. Hail. <laughs>